the next application of determinant is Kramer's rule. Kramer's rule is one of the method to solve system of linear equation. Let's say if AX equal to B is a system of N linear equations in N unknowns such that determinant of A not equal to zero, then the system has a unique solution. This solution is X1 equal to determinant of A1 divided by determinant of A. X2 equal to determinant of A2 divided by determinant of A and so on until Xn equal to determinant of An divided by determinant of A. Okay, next, we want to know what is A1, A2, A3 and so on until An. Well, Aj is the metric obtained by replacing the entries in the J column of A by the entries in the metric B. And metric B here will be B1, B2 and so on until Bn. Next, we try to solve one example using Kramer's rule. Example page number 62. So, use Kramer's rule to solve the following system of linear equation. So, we have the system here. X1 plus 2X3 equal to 6. Negative 3X1 plus 4X2 plus 6X3 equal to 30. Negative X1 minus 2X2 plus 3X3 equal to 8. So, we need to use Kramer's rule to solve for X1, X2 and X3. So, for the first step, we state the metric A, metric B, A1, A2 and A3. Metric A equal to A is the coefficient metric. So you take the coefficient for X1, X2 and X3. So you write it here in the metric form. So 1, 0, 2, negative 3, 4, 6, negative 1. Negative 2 and 3. Okay, next, we find the metric B here. Metric B here equal to 6, 30, 8. Metric A1. We take the metric A, but for the first column here, we replace with metric B. So, that's mean the first column here, you take this value. So, 6, 30, 8. Okay, but for the second and third column, you just take the original metric A here. 0, 4, Negative 2, 2, 6, 3. Next, metric A2. So, metric A2, we take the original metric A, but now we replace the column 2 or second column here with metric B. So, you will have here 1, negative 3, negative 1. But the second column here, you replace with the metric B here. 6, 
thirty eight. And the third column here, you take the original third column from the matrix A. 2, 6, 3. The last one, A3, same thing. We take the matrix A, but now you replace the third column here with matrix B. So you will have here 1, negative 3, negative 1. 0, 4, negative 2. And then this one you replace with metric B. 6, 38. Second step, we find determinant of A, determinant of A1, determinant of A2, and determinant of a3 To find the determinant of A, determinant of A1, determinant of A2 and determinant of A3, you can use cofactor expansion. So you try to calculate it, then try you get the determinant of A you will get here 44. Determinant of A1 equal to negative 40. Determinant of A2 equal to 72. Determinant of A3 equal to 152. The last step here, we can compute the value for X1, X2 and X3 using Kramer's rule. So X1 equal to determinant of A1 divided by determinant of A. So determinant of A1 equal to negative 40 and then you divide by the determinant of A equal to 44. Then you get X1 here equal to negative 10 over 11. Next, we find what is X2. X2 here equal to determinant of A2 divided by determinant of A. So, determinant of A2 equal to 72 divided by determinant of A equal to 44. And then you will get here 18 over 11. The last one, we compute X3. So, equal to determinant of A3 divided by determinant of A equal to, then you substitute determinant of A3 equal to 152 divided by determinant of A equal to 44. Then you can get X3 here equal to 38 over 11. Okay, we try to solve exercise page number 63. Okay, you are given the system of linear equation here. Okay, then the first question, the question asks you to write the above system in metric form. That means we need to write in this form. A x equal to B. So, remember A is the coefficient metric. So, you take all the coefficient for x, y, and z, and then we write in the metric form. So this one you will have 1, 3, 3. So 1, 3, 3. Second row, 1, 4, 3. 1, 4, 3. The third row, 1, 3, 4. So what is our x now? x, y, z. So, x, y, z. And what is our b? 1, negative 2, negative 1. So, we write in the column. So, we solve for the question number 1. Second question. Find 
determinant of A using cofactor expansion along the first column. So that means we need to find the determinant of A. So along the first column, the formula will be A11, C11 plus A21, C21 plus A31, C31. Next, we need to compute what is C11, C21. And C31. So we find C11 first. C11 equal to negative 1 power 2 M11 equal to negative 1 power 2 equal to 1 M11. So we have A here, coefficient matrix here. So you delete first row and first column. So what you will have here? 4, 3, 3, 4. And then we solve to find what is C11. So 1, determinant for this matrix, 4 multiplied with 4 minus 3 multiplied with 3. So we compute this one. 4 multiply with 4, 16 minus 9. So 1 multiply with 7. So what you will get here, C11 equal to 7. Next, we find C21. So C21 equal to negative 1 power 3. And 2, 1 equal to negative 1 power 3. You will get here negative 1. And 2, 1. Okay, so that's me. You delete second row, first column. So what you will have here? 3, 3, 3, 4. And then we compute for this one. Negative 1. 3 multiply with 4. Minus 3 multiply with 3. So we solve for this one. 3 multiply with 4, 12. Minus 3 multiply with 3 is 9. So negative 1 multiply with 3. So negative 1 multiply with 3, you will get here negative 3. Okay, then we compute C31. So C31 equal to negative 1 power 4 M31. So negative 1 power 4 equal to 1. So M31. So we delete third row and first column. So you will have here 3, 3, 4, 3. So we compute for this one. So 3 multiply with 3 minus 3 multiply with 4. So 9 minus 12. So 1 here multiply with negative 3. So C31 equal to negative 3. Then we compute the determinant of A. We substitute into the formula here. So what is A11? So A11 here equal to 1. So 1 multiply with C11. C11 equal to 7. A21. So A21 here equal to 1. And then multiply with C21. So C21 equal to negative 3. Plus A31 here equal to 1. And then we multiply with C31 here equal to negative 3. So we solve for this one. 7 minus 3 minus 
3. So, you will have here 1. So, determinant of A equal to 1. The last question. Solve the system X, Y and Z using Kramer's rule. So, first step here. We find what is matrix A, B, A1, A2 and A3. So, matrix A equal to this matrix, coefficient matrix from the question number 1. So, A equal to 1, 3, 3, 1, 4, 3, 1, 3, 4. Next, matrix B. So, matrix B, this one. 1, negative 2, negative 1. Okay, next one is matrix A1. So, matrix A1, actually, you take the matrix A, but you replace the first column with matrix B. So, what you will have here, 1, negative 2, negative 1, 3, 4, 3, 3, 3, 4. For matrix A2, same thing. We take the matrix A, but now we replace the second column with matrix B. So, you will have 1, 1, 1, 1, negative 2, negative 1, 3, 3, 4. And the last one is A3. So, A3, same thing, you take the matrix A, but now you replace the third column with matrix B. So, what you will have here, 1, 1, 1, 3, 4, 3, 1, negative 2, negative 1. Next, we go for the second step. Step 2, we need to compute for the determinant of A, determinant of A1, determinant of A2, and determinant of A3. So, determinant of A, Okay, you can get from the question number 2 just now, determinant of A equal to 1. But, you try to do it on your own to compute the determinant of A1, A2 and A3 here. So, you check with my answer here. Supposedly, determinant of A1, you will get 16. Determinant of A2 equal to negative 3. And then, determinant of A3 equal to negative 2. So, you make sure you get all this answer for determinant of A1, A2 and A3. Step number 3, the last step here, we need to compute for the value of X, Y and Z using Kramer's rule. So, the formula will be X equal to determinant of A1 we divide it with the determinant of A. So, determinant of A1 equal to 16. So, we divide with the determinant of A equal to 1. So, you will get here X equal to 16. Okay, for Y, determinant of A2, you divide it with determinant of A. And then, determinant of A2 here equal to negative 3. Then, we divide it with... 1, so negative 3 divided by 1, you will get here negative 3. And the last one, Z equal to determinant of A3. We divide it with the determinant of A. So determinant of A3 equal to negative 2. We divide it with value of 1. Then you will get Z here equal to negative 2. So now you solve for X. Y and Z using Kramer's rule. As your practice, please do homework 3.3, page number 64.
Try to solve all the question number one to number six. Good luck.